The uh, title of this talk, Toto, I have a feeling we're not on a VPN anymore, and no, my dog is not named Toto. If you did any bit of the OSN challenge, my dog is named Kelso. Long story there, not going to go into it. But it's kind of weird when you find out a lot of people are like investigating your life and like secretly like social engineering. It's weird to know so much about you. It is. I feel closer to all of you, but in a weird way. But I appreciate it. So I'm Jonathan Tomek, um, also known as uh, Sake Bam, which is probably what most people here would know me by. Um, my call sign here for my ham radio license is K4RUK, in case you needed that one as well. I, was, I wasn't sure what time I was going to do this, so hopefully people are going to sit on the talk for this OSN thing, but whatever. it all worked out. Um, I am a former Marine um, Sergeant. That was another one of those puzzles, so you got that. Um, and I basically traveled to, I think, about 50 countries around the world and have done many numerous jobs from malware analysis, research, uh, network forensics, cyber crime tracking, cyber espionage tracking, you name it. And now basically that all is kind of consolidated into what we call threat intelligence, which I guess it's kind of that, but um, I really enjoy it nonetheless. Um, I am also a co-founder and organizer of ThoughtCon. So if so, after this, if you guys don't have tickets, get ready for that because it's just as fun. <laughs> and that's where we have the after after party. <laughs> it is really really worthwhile. Okay, enough about me on any of that. You guys can ask questions or get to know me later. So let's dive deep into our fun talk tonight. <laughs> Follow the yellow brick road. As we go into this talk, I want everybody in here to realize that I'm going to be focusing a lot more on the commercial VPN space. Well, commercial being the ones that people are going to pay for, whether they're free or just available to use. I'm not going to really focus on the protocols like OpenVPN or WireGuard, but I'm happy to answer a lot of those questions afterwards if you're interested. But um, I just want everybody in here to be aware of their surroundings, let me put it that way. So, to begin, we have, what, almost a couple thousand different VPN providers that exist out there from Nord, Express, et cetera. You can find some, actually, let's, let's even click on it. How many do we think we have? Let's see if this loads. Lots, is this, can you guys see this? Yeah. Great. So, I've analyzed approximately 650 different ones. So we have quite a few for you to choose from if you ever want to know. And they're quite easy to reverse engineer if you want to learn. I'm happy to teach you that after, well, after this as well. But anyway, back to the talk. So 650 big bands I've looked at, including different proxies, etc. And a lot of them love to offer this, these no logging policies for you. Yay, privacy, right? Because that's what we're really here for, is we want to feel secure. That's why we have a VPN, or at least most people, or bypass censorship, or speed boost, or protect me while I'm playing a video game so I don't get DDoSed, or just watch some streaming service like Netflix from anywhere. And as we've been paying attention to a lot of the, uh, if you watch YouTube, you get a lot of really great ads for ExpressVPN here or NordVPN there, and they are really packing it in, and all the different uh, providers and content creators are definitely pushing that, whether you watch Twitch or wherever, because they're making a lot of money off of us, because basically everybody wants a VPN because they feel safe. There are some new kinds of VPNs in town, though, just other outside the ones that um, you've heard of, and some of those are peer-to-peer -peer based, they're called DVPNs, and they are cryptocurrency-esque. Um, they are offering a new form of privacy that I guess is effectively the same as all the other ones, but at least they get to say it. Um, and then there's also Shadow Socks, which is another form of protocol that's really, really getting popular because it's able to get around certain things in China. Um, so. Is the Emerald City really made of emeralds? I don't know. <laughs> why would anybody go online and just lie? I mean, why would these providers do any of these sorts of things? I was really hoping for that, but I'm terrible at jokes. <laughs> so, 
with that. Oh my gosh, lions and tigers and bears, oh my! So we obviously put a lot of trust in them, mainly because we do pay for these services, and we see and buy the things that we know, whether or not it's advertised or not, or we hear about it organically from our friends or other affiliates, like great review sites and other trusted sources. And we see that there's obviously a lot of competition. We have, or you already saw, there's thousands of different types of providers and they all offer or try to offer something unique about them. Whether it's a speed boost or the, uh, let's see, we have additional programs that'll help you out with password protect because obviously that's what I want my geek in to do for me as well. Um, but in addition to this, there are lots of VPNs now that are getting heavily targeted by Hollywood because they have servers, whether they're here in the US and Europe, wherever it is, and they're getting really heavily sued. And I did include a bunch of links in here if you're interested in the slides. So you can click on them and read all about this stuff. And basically how it's all working is, instead of targeting the individual users that are doing torrenting now, the actual VPN providers are now going after the people. Even though they say they're not logging, they still will go after you. So how can you have both a logging and a not logging solution at the same time? Doesn't really work that way. So with that being said as well, this is all jurisdictional. So every country has its own rules. Just because Nord might be based out of Panama doesn't mean they can't, don't have to abide by rules of the USA because they have servers in the US. They have VPNs that might exist in a data center, such as like AWS. They might have a different data center, or they might have a residential network, which is kind of how they're now starting to bypass a lot of these security protocol or security measures that is why certain streaming providers cannot block them. But that's slowly coming to an end, which if anybody in here uses a VPN, they're starting to notice, why isn't my VPN working when I try to stream Netflix? This is why there's a huge crackdown coming and a lot of it's because of these lawsuits saying, this is how we're gonna go after that problem. Um, countries are also doing this. So India is the new one on there which says, if you have a VPN, doesn't matter if it's in a data center, we need to know about it, here's the IP address and tell us everything about it. So that's gonna be a big jumble. So just be mindful of some of that. In fact, uh, even VPNs are suing each other. There's Several that I can account for. TorGuard sues NordVPN for blackmailing them. You have, it, it's actually really interesting based upon where they're located. So we have one that's kind of, I'm not going to call it really a VPN or a pro, uh, but it's more of a proxy for residential proxies. But you have um, Bright Networks, formerly Illuminati, and Oxylabs are in a lawsuit. But one of them is based out of Lithuania and one's based out of Israel. So why would they sue themselves in Texas? Great question, because the US laws are very fantastic. And you know what's great? The VPNs are using them for residential proxies. So be mindful of everything you're doing there, because this is, it all comes down to the nice, lovely DMCA law. But anyway, I'm rambling on again. Okay. So they also like to give you a lot of really good applications to use, whether it's for on your mobile device, on your desktop, it could be a browser extension, doesn't really matter, but that's what they're giving us. In fact, even one of them now has quantum resistant VPN keys. Oh my, that just came out yesterday. <laughs> Imagine, I love this. So now let's get to where it all gets really juicy. So after investigating and looking into a bunch of these proxies, and don't worry, I'll show you some great examples. A bunch of them, mainly the free ones, are really just proxies. In fact, they're not even doing any encryption. Maybe they're doing a very little form of encryption, which I'll show you. Um, they actually don't block WebRTC. And what that means, in case uh, you've never heard of this, basically it's a way that you can actually find out the IP address of the person that's going across the VPN. So if I'm visiting a, web, a site that has WebRTC enabled, I can actually figure out who is behind the proxy or the VPN. So but what's the point of a VPN? <laughs> they just don't block it. In fact, some of them don't even have a kill switch, which is if I'm surfing the internet and I have my VPN enabled and it somehow dies or there's a hiccup, I still want to be able to browse, but the kill switch is going to stop you from having that option. 
but now you're not private again. And in fact, there was, uh, that's, if you're familiar, there was, what was that company? Uh, Ubiquity was ransomed for like $4 billion a couple months ago. And the person behind it was using Surfshark and Surfshark did not have a kill switch. And they figured out this was the guy behind it because the kill switch failed and they had his home IP address. So again, gotta love how VPNs operate. So things to consider. And very, very recently, within the past week, um, Surfshark, Turbo, VPN, Viper, and Atlas, pay attention to some of these names, by the way, you're gonna see how they all kind of collaborate. Um, they were caught installing a root CA certificate. So what that allows you to do, if you've ever used a man-in-the-middle proxy, I can create a, a SSL certificate that allows me to decrypt traffic anytime I so choose. They all did it. Or I can manipulate traffic however I want to do it. Why would they do that? I thought they were for us. I love VPNs. Okay, sorry. Um, some of them also do what's called uh, HTML or browser canvassing, which is where they can see and watch as not only as you type, but as you move your mouse around and see all the movements, which is kind of a weird little thing, right? Well, they like to take some of that and clone those actions and sell it for ad fraud. Um, in fact, even the private relays like Apple Private Relay, somebody, uh, Mulvad did an analysis and they basically, because of how Apple's using their protocols, they're using this thing called Quick. It's different than TCP or UP, it's a very special protocol, but it basically allow, it allows Apple Private Relay to bypass firewall rules. So if you had certain things in place, you get to go around that. And I think probably the worst part is instead of spending all the money on security, they spend it all on the ads, they are now they get compromised pretty frequently. And there's been several instances where all of the keys on the systems were stolen. So they could have, and this happened for I think about a good month or two, watching all the traffic if you were just a regular normal hacker, not like an espionage level nation state, which imagine that, why would they want that data? Been watching traffic. So that's basically, that's the start of this. So let's dive in for a couple little VPNs so you can see exactly what some of these guys are doing for encryption levels. If you're not familiar with base 64 <laughs> or URL encoding, well, let's throw in a little bit of ROT13 in there, call that some encryption, and do some very basic things, right? In fact, we'll just give full requests and have some delicious permissions that give us full access to how your browser works, not encode it, and just do the bare minimum. And Yes, this one's a free, this is free and paid as a VPN, but I just wanted to show you. And um, this one, I did a bit of this analysis with um, CRX, I think it's called, I don't remember it, but Duo built this wonderful tool for you to basically rip apart all CRX encoding uh, extensions in Chrome. And it makes it really clean. So that's why I'm gonna use a couple examples there. But they also give you these lovely permissions and rate them for you. So click me. A lot of people use this one, surprisingly. Three million users out there. I think I don't know why when I looked at it, but I just thought that stood out a little bit. <laughs> Secret internals do not uh, use. Let's fire some people. But you'd think that they would try to do a little bit more with our actual privacy here. Or adding this in here. Remember I was talking about how they're doing the HTML canvassing, that they're actually tracking and monitoring your mouse movements and your keyboards. Because all that data, if you're not, if it's free, you're the product, as we've heard before. However, now in this lovely day and age, even if you're paying for stuff, you are also, again, the product. Imagine that. But if, uh, from my past life of doing ad fraud work, which is pretty boring, by the way, but it's also kind of fun because it's kind of like one of those soft crimes that nobody really goes after, people that do ad fraud. Well, if you can steal an actual human's movements with a mice, you can do a lot of really cool things to bypass 
ad fraud tricking and the captures and stuff. So that's kind of how they steal some of this, which is why they have this. Or it would be a shame if they showed you all of their servers and maybe the usernames and passwords and just put it all right here for you. And so you could just see who's using your networks and anybody can log in and play around because it's baked into their code. God, I love it. Make money somehow. Somebody's got to make money. These aren't high schoolers. I wish they were. I wish they were. These are like, le I don't want to call them legitimate coders. But that's actually a fun thing to look at, as, as I'll go into when I get into uh, some of the Android stuff. But when you submit an app, you have to submit enough information about who created it. And a lot of these times, you're going to find like Joe Schmo at gmail.com, and you're like, that looks pretty legit. <laughs> okay, so this one's fun, Zenmate. This is actually a paid VPN that a lot of people use. It's in fact tied to a different one, and I'll get to that in a moment, but I don't know if you can look right here, how it says start of the Ethereum <laughs> blockchain. Imagine, um, I don't know if this matters to anybody here, but if your phone is doing cryptocurrency, uh, Mining, you probably want to know about that, especially at a low rate. Why is your phone like mining at any given time? Well, the fun part is, even though that's the, this part's the Chrome extension, it's doing it on iOS as well. And you can see, look at how detailed their lovely updates are every time they do a patch. It looks a little bit the same. Yeah, it looks. <laughs> so there's a fun thing about iOS and Android that is if you don't update your app every six months, they'll kick it off the store. So imagine, <laughs> maybe this is why they do that. Well, a fun thing here too is some of these apps actually, whether it's on Android or iOS by the way, they will have special things that they'll download which will then execute. So that's how they bypass a lot of restrictions in the stores. Just so you know. Or the apps actually won't even activate until your device is sitting for long enough, about five minutes or so, maybe a little longer. And once that is settled, because obviously our phones are basically like accelerometers, all the fun things, it knows it's not moving, there's not a lot of bandwidth, that's when your device actually turns on and allows them to reverse tunnel and use your IP address for a IP, a residential IP at that. So let's look at some of the permissions. So I'm just gonna go through two really kind of crud ones and then I'll give you some good examples of better ones. But why would a GPS need to know your precise location? I don't know, I don't know why that would matter. Or why does it need to run at startup or prevent your device from sleeping or reading your service configuration files? Why does it even need to know about your phone? Why does it have to activate the microphone in the cases? I don't know. That's Reading your device setting. I forgot to highlight that one. All right, well, you probably haven't heard of those, but you have heard of these. Norton Express VPN, probably the two most popular VPNs out there right now. Why do they need to know about some of your Wi Fi connections? Oh, maybe it's because they want to know which IP address you are coming from or who's around you, what other networks are out there. Why do they need to interact with other users on your phone? Why do they also need to run a startup to be able to create shortcuts? Things that people aren't really paying attention to with a lot of your actual uh, apps. Because everybody has your phone on you at all times, and how often is your phone ever shut off like your laptop? Oh wait, nobody really does that ever. <laughs> Express VPN 2, precise location. Or why does it need to pair with Bluetooth devices? So, fun thing here is just like it's also doing the Wi-Fi uh, connections, as well as the Bluetooth devices, it finds out who's also near you. The way that this data is collected is as your phone is on, it's seeing what's around you at that given point. And with the precise location, as you walk around, it's saying, here I am right now. Here's this Wi-Fi access point. As it keeps seeing it in, and collecting it and sending it back, it's triangulating where those access points are. They're doing data collection for you. Or you're doing it for them, rather. But I you like pay for send, it. I'd like to send them an invoice. You, yeah, that's fantastic. Or just do it for Wiggle for free. 
I mean, that's why we have Wiggle, right? If anybody here doesn't know what WiggleNet is, check it out. It's basically community-driven monitoring, like tracking um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices around the world. So, why do we pay for these things if we're really doing all these great things? They're just making money, hand over this. Okay, so pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. So who owns these VPNs? Well, Cape owns Express, CyberGhost, ZenMate, as we just looked at, PIA, or also known as Private Internet Access. They also own several affiliate sites or reviewing sites, if uh, that's probably a better term, such as VPN Mentor and WizCase. And I have this information if you like it. I probably had some more uh, of the links to this to, to show this out, but I'm not the only one that does this research to find it out there, but I'm sure that not everybody here is going to do all this investigation to find out that, hey, why is this review site saying these are the top 10? Because they own them. Wow. <laughs> That's why they're making so much money. It's fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. so What's also really interesting about Cape, very specifically, so they had this thing called CrossRider, which is effectively a framework. They've now very recently shut it down, but it basically enabled uh, malicious ha uh, actors to be distributing malware. And it also allowed for ad injection through their VPNs. <laughs> God, I love that. So because of enough people calling out, they turn it down. They have obviously a lot of money, so they're buying up privacy, trying to figure out how to make themselves look good. But you can't really clean all the blood off your hands, especially when you have a CIO that literally worked for the United Arab Emirates and is wanted by the DOJ, which changed. Basically, he was able to get off and still keep working there. But this dude, think about this for a second. If you are the one that distributed the malware and you're still working at this company, you work for UAE, <laughs> do you still trust this guy? So, anyway, there's several other people that work there that probably shouldn't trust. So stay clear of these four, even though they say they may be independent. They've been buying a lot of these providers. So, um, Cape purchased ExpressVPN for the grand total of almost a billion dollars. Why? What VPN is ever worth that amount of money? Well, obviously there's a very good reason that they have enough users and you probably didn't know that all these VPNs are very similar in nature and have a lot of that stuff. Nord is not an angel either. Nord is Surfshark. Oh, they merged. Oh, God. So did and Nord purchased Atlas VPN not too long ago. So now you have three all kind of tied together. In fact, Nord was also compromised in 2019, not too long ago, for having pretty bad security. That's where they had their keys stolen so that people could see it. And they kind of covered it up saying, oh, well, they only had access for about a week and this. Oh, okay. I really still believe you that you've had only an access for a week. It doesn't mean that they didn't have it before. Nobody noticed it before, sure not. Well, this is a shout out to my friend Yale, who actually inspired me to give this talk at ShmooCon because of, uh, she works at Consumer Reports and said, and had this wonderful post, and Nord had one of the, uh, they're the, they're very big on privacy. They actually say that, and they've had several audits done, but they actually perform the worst in collecting too much information. Imagine that. <laughs> God, don't you just love how they post all this stuff and have the great external audits, and somehow they still just fake it all? Okay, Ziff Davis. This is actually a really big organization. If you've never heard of it, they own quite a lot of things and they kind of are like this big conglomerate. Um, they own soon to be three VPNs, including Encrypt Me, if you've, if you've heard of that. Strong VPN, IP Vanish. Well, they also own PC Mag, Gear Locker, and Tech Saver. Another couple review sites that make it look like they're the best. And they all kind of work together in a way, saying that, hey, we know all of these providers, but if you're consolidating the market down to really only a couple big players, I'm sure, I don't know if everybody here uses most of these VPNs, but these are the big ones. And 
I'm sorry? Sounds like phone carriers. It's kind of like phone carriers. Everybody really just is owned by somebody else is correct. Um, and so now, um, well, as I didn't know this until literally yesterday, Opera VPN, what that was owned, uh, Surf Easy is basically was Opera. However, Symantec just bought it for a couple million dollars. So now Symantec owns Surf Easy. So now you can see like everything's kind of like this little hat. Okay. There's no place like home. So, I know I'm probably scared you a little bit, at least you can now have an understanding of which providers are really bad. I do have some recommendations that I'll give you, but I'll probably be offhand. But going into this, is rolling your own VPN actually better? There's services out there like Algo VPN, or you could set up Open VPN at your house, or whatever it may be, but is it really better? Is it Open VPN's not the easiest thing in here for a lot of people? It might be. If you have like a PSX firewall, that could be fun. You can poke around with it. If anything, I'm going to absolutely recommend WireGuard for a vast majority of people because it's in my. If you're technical enough, it's really simple, but it's also the most secure, in my opinion, out there right now. But there's a couple other simple solutions for you to check out. But those are going to be my two favorite ones at this time. Um, but what are you really trying to do? Like, what is, what's the actual purpose of you having a VPN? Are you like trying to disguise your location for streaming? Is it like, are you trying to bypass work restrictions? Like, is it, uh, what is the actual purpose of you having a VPN? Because you know what, who cares if you're gonna use Express if literally it's just you trying to disguise your location even though they might be snooping on your traffic or whatnot because it's not like ISPs or anybody doesn't do it anyway. Heck, I mean, there's Stingrays that'll literally monitor your phone traffic. Okay, so don't be so paranoid, but just to also know what your real use case is. So I'll also recommend don't, buy, don't bypass work restrictions. That stuff just can get really messy <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> Coming from like a defensive background, a lot of people are like, oh, I just don't want my work to see all my traffic and stuff. Well, I know a lot of people work remote, work from home, et cetera. But the thing is, a lot of malicious actors out there love to use VPNs also. So you are kind of now one and the same as somebody that's doing the bad stuff. So maybe work with your work to say, hey, this is what I'm gonna do, maybe they'll open it up. I don't know how restrictive your policies are, but just throwing it out there. A different case would be maybe set up your own VPN at home and then you can do it that way. But just be mindful of using which, which services you use. Use your own equipment. I'm sorry, use your own equipment? Use your own equipment. Always use your own equipment. Learn just enough, but obviously it doesn't work for our parents. They're not gonna be able to figure this out, and I know there are solutions, and I actually talked to somebody uh, right before the conference even started, that they're trying to work on some services to make this easier for people. There are a bunch of things out there that you can use, kind of like a sling box for your, like a router, like go around the world and look like you're always at home. Fantastic, but some of the, like I said, some of the VPNs will try to track where you're located anyway, so again, know the purpose of what you're gonna be doing with VPN. Um, and then like any IoT device, are you ever updating your services? If you're gonna be using OpenVPN, there are vulnerabilities all the time or just constant misconfigurations that people do, thereby defeating why you're even using the VPN in the first place. So be very mindful. So this is why if you're gonna be doing anything with a VPN by yourself, be mindful of what you're doing and just learn enough about it. And if I, that's not enough. I'm happy to give you some good resources to help you figure some of that out, but just throwing that out there. So I know I scared you quite a bit. Apologize. But in that case, questions? Excellent. I love no questions. This makes me feel good. Sorry. Yes? What recommendations do you have for finding So for me, uh, my recommendations to which is the question of finding a good VPN provider. There's actually a couple of good sites, and in fact, I really do recommend um, Consumer Reports. There are, they have, they've anal analyzed a bunch of different ones really in depth. They've, they expose all of their techniques and how to do that. There's actually a couple of um, sites out there that will check to see if your VPN, if you did a trial, will test to see if there's a kill switch, if there's WebRTC enabled. Um, even give you a little bit of analysis on um, the VPNs themselves, but 
in my opinion, don't check a lot of the review sites. Go to like trusted and nonprofit sort of places that are really non-biased. In my opinion, like that, uh, Consumer Reports is really non-biased in that way because they're they have to be. They're really their feet are held to the fire. They're awesome that way. Um, I personally don't trust anybody if they're going to be trying to sell me an affiliate thing on. Uh, whether it's YouTube or Twitch, that's just me. There are some people out there that will give, they basically bash other people saying, oh, well, why isn't TourGuard your number one choice because you didn't even put it on the list. I'm like, because you're selling them, dude. Leave it alone. Um, but that's, that's my number one. Um, and there are some providers out there that I will directly recommend right away because they do expose their internal audits. They open source their code for audits even down to like how their keys are generated, even though the keys are always randomly made, the whole configuration, and they'll give that. So I can tell that to you off hand. I didn't want to like, I want to be very independent on this. I just want to bash everybody. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Yes, sir. Um, it makes me nervous to use a personal VPN, but we use a corporate VPN. Mm -hmm. We've used a few over the years from Cisco and at and Yes. Um, as far as those go, are they pretty solid, or do those get out of date and have compromises too? Well, if you've read any bit of the news, um, F5 had a major vulnerability that exposed it, basically compromised half of the internet because a lot of people use F5. Um, there are some new like zero trust solutions out there that are trying to be really good. However, it doesn't mean that everything is always secure. I mean, in the case of F5, they had a compromise, they fixed it. But that doesn't mean actors weren't able to get in and do whatever. Um, the problem is stuff, software is made by humans, will always have faults, et cetera. But there's only so much you could possibly do. Have layered security, talk all day on the blue stuff, uh, blue team stuff. But um, there, are, there are good solutions. I mean, it's, using it is always, in my opinion, good. Like you, like there's any connect out there, open VPN, but just have somebody that understands enough about setting up a VPN and make sure it's always updated. Maybe rotate keys every so often because there's ways to do that. That's that's going to be your best best bet. There there are solutions that are trying to do like be good, but how many times have I found out there that there's like a Cisco any connect at this school that literally uses the bare bones like three years old VPN thing. So many people do that. Very few people ever like try to update fast enough because they don't, I don't know. I wish I knew. I <laughs> wish I knew. When that breaks, you yeah. everyone screaming. You have everybody so screaming. You never want to change it. Once it's working, you're like, okay, great. You only change it when you have to, and then you're, then you're terrified. And, and you that's know, that's, that's that pattern. It's the IT pattern. It's, it's exactly it. Because for work, we're trying to, we want to secure our traffic going into like all the systems and services. And that's why I wanted to go more into the commercial space and I can definitely talk about how certain VPNs or some of them are good or some of them are bad. Like that's, that's somebody's going to kill me because I hate saying zero trust, but that's why things are going that way. You know, that's like the new term. But at the same point, that's not flawless at all. But something's better than nothing, but just always be up to date. That's going to be my best recommendation there. So, Any more questions? Oh, yes. Um, some of these larger, like, legitimate VPN providers that are still, like, very much not respecting your privacy, um, are their privacy policies at least forthright with this? Like, do they tell you what they're doing with it? Or is it kind of like, pretend we're not stealing all this data? <laughs> so, are the large VPN providers saying, we're not really stealing your data, or what are we actually doing with it? They put forward a lot of great legal documentation that says all, thing, all these things. In fact, they, put, they have external audits to make it look really good. But when you actually can try to do some of them, you, uh, test it, you're like, this isn't, no. <laughs> or they, act, they try to get additional permissions over time, like, hey, I need to have access to this, because if not, I can't work with Wi-Fi or whatever may, whatever reason, right? Because our phones are the worst. Phones are absolutely the worst. But it doesn't mean that, uh, just because they had external audits doesn't mean they can't lie to you in those ways, because there's certain things they'll open source it. But um, 
how do you earn trust is I think their goal. They're trying to be all privacy centric, trying to do all this no logging, like these policies, except that then they say what the things they do log. And I'm like, it's, it's not one, it's, it's one or the other. You can't have no logging and then say that you're also logging like credit cards and stuff. I mean, I, I, it's, it's a very interesting practice. But um, check out the audits. I mean, that's probably the best thing, if they even have them. Or look at the uh, times that they were compromised, because a lot of that stuff gets very public. And then you can see like what's exposed. Or if you're really interested in reverse engineering, let's poke around, because that's literally what I've been doing with this. And you're just like, oh, look at this. And then my favorite one is like I was telling you about how I found out some of them after just sitting on the table waiting to sleep for X amount of time. Well, shocking that they like to use your phone as a pivot point because that's how they do it. Reverse proxies are terrible. So, so kind of answer your question, I guess. It's how do you hold their feet to the fire? Well, good question. How? I mean, their jurisdictions are in different countries all around the world. I mean. Nord, like I said, was out of Panama. Like you have some that are based in Canada. You have some that are based in Switzerland or wherever they may be. And those jurisdictions are very special. But the problem is when you have a VPN, it, and then you get to choose where it is, you now have a very different jurisdiction you're going to deal with. And just because they say, oh, well, we have no logging, even though we're, a, we're based out of, I don't know, England, servers are still hijacked. I mean, they've had, like Windscribe, had their service literally seized by police. What do you do then? You now have the keys, the entire infrastructure, because it was all on that box. But you might not know that. Who's going to be told? They're not going to be like, oh, yeah, we had our box seized. No, no, don't worry about it. They just, it's such bad, like, a visibility on their behalf, so they just don't want to tell it. But it gets exposed. It's out there. I just happen to read a lot, so I know more about it. So. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Is there any place to go to read about this? Well, for my news source, my aggregator, I use Feedly, and I just happen to really enjoy VPNs and proxies and things like that, so that's why I read a lot about it. But um, you, if, if you're interested in yours, I would just pop it in there. Or even, sometimes people use like the Google uh, like Word thing. Not that I trust Google, but I'm just, I know that they have that. But you could put that in there and any time like, a certain company name gets popped up, boom, now you've got an alert on it. Because it's not like you can read the news every day, but if you get an alert on it, there you go. So that's my recommendation there, at least for that. So, any more questions? Are you done? Am I done? Oh, no, this is an ongoing project for me because it's like any, anybody that's hacking, I thought it was just such a fun project over the years, and I just keep, I've just been working on it. So I'm going to keep doing this for a long time, I guess. Can we follow you? You can follow me anytime. <laughs> Stalk me. I mean, people, you probably know more about me now after that OSN challenge than I know that you know about me. It's creepy. I use VPN. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I want to, I wish I could write like a whole white paper on this stuff. I think it'd be really fantastic, but I'm also really lazy. So I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's a lot of it's in the slides. So with that, Zaijian, goodbye, Matane. Uh, please, if you can, I'd love feedback on this. If there's any more I can add to this, I'd really greatly appreciate it because I really think I want to make this a bit bigger. I don't know if I hit an hour or not. Probably no nope, about 40 minutes, so I did exactly the right time. So you guys could all go home. Um, but I'm I'm really here to help. I want to make this talk better. So if there's something that I can add, whether it's um, working on like corporate VPNs, maybe I'll work on adding some of that because that might actually be a fantastic thing. Maybe better if I could like come up with better solutions for you, that might be a good thing too. But um, you can find me here. Uh, that's my Proton Mail, by the way. Or if you want, tw tweet me. But I think a lot of people hate Twitter now. But I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. If you want to find me, you'll find me. <laughs> or come to ThoughtCon. Do that. But hit me up whatever it is, and I'm uh, happy to help out in any way I can. So with that, thank you. And let's just get around.
Okay. <laughs> 